Okay, here's a cold start. What it looks like, what it sounds like. Here's a keyed ignition. Glow plug light illuminates like it should for nine seconds. Here we go. This is the parking brake warning light. So it's illuminated red right now. Now it's off. First upgrades were obviously the soft top. New soft doors. New rear curtain. And high back seats. Um, all four brand new. Brand new seat belts and buckles. Alright. They retract perfectly. New little fire extinguisher. Newest upgrade is the Wet Sounds Stealth 6 and uh, wet sounds AS6 subwoofer both are sealed um, to the elements you can get them wet muddy 
and I have a whole separate video on that I'll put in the description as well you guys can check that out uh, this sounds amazing alright took the doghouse off um, show you the back of the engine but mainly uh, the cast car grounding harness right here okay this grounds to the block and it has a bunch of leads going off everywhere so when I originally got this from plan B supply they gave me a handful of new glow plugs which are those little orange uh, glow plug wires right there um, the glow plug weight light was not working and after some research found the most common thing was this grounding harness worst case scenario for that was that the start box was bad which those can get pretty pricey so um, you were just looking at the back of the block right there some of these leads come to here um, everything was basically an additional ground so this was already grounded the alternator but the cast car grounding harness um, just had extra leads. The only extra one was this one that grounds to the body. And this is actually goes to the top of the start box. So this was an additional. Um, the grounding harness also goes down under the passenger seat and grounds to the starter, the block, the body, the alternator, and then the top of the start box installed that put new glow plugs in there start system works fantastically now every time did not need a new uh, start box thankfully so a lot of things are redundant for combat purposes um, your accessory belts have two in case you break one you still have one to get you home um, what's kind of cool about the coolant system coolant fan this is your Cadillac valve um, if that were to fail, the default, the fan is going to be stuck on. So if you ever have temperature issues, your Cadillac valve goes out, whatever, at least your fan is going to be stuck on instead of not being able to turn on when it gets too hot. So everything's pretty simple, really easy to get to. It's kind of like a cockroach. You can't, you can't kill it. This thing is just going to keep going. It's been amazing. All right, let's go underneath. So all these CV axles have been rebuilt. This is the input seal to the geared hub. I replaced all those because those started leaking after the axles went back in. Um, this is the cover to the back of your spindle. Um, all those have, been, have come off to inspect the spindle nut. And I was happy to see that they all had the new, the newer style lock rings on there that have two locking tabs. So those are good. New oil in all the geared hubs. Here's the front diff. Front diff's got fresh oil in it. Let's see. Here's front brake rotor and pads, inboard brakes. You can see, there you go, brake pad have plenty of life on them. Rotors aren't scored up or anything. Moving along. Uh, and I recently replaced this Pitman arm. And idler arm. And I do have new tie rod ends to replace these guys I just haven't gotten to that moving down um, there was a pretty big hole in this exhaust pipe um, it was pretty loud but buzz muffler in town bent this pipe welded it in nice man it it's helped the uh, ride quality so much 
you can actually have a conversation inside now after they fix that. Oh. AC Delco um, OEM equivalent filter. Here's the super clean fuel tank. I'm proud of this one. Um, after I got it home, started looking at things. Had a strong diesel smell. This whole fuel tank was saturated with fuel, so I had to drop it. Took these straps off, disconnected it, uh, drained it through this plug, drain plug. This is a brand new plug. But the top inspection panel was leaking so every time you hit a bump it was basically sloshing out the top and just covering this thing in diesel fuel um, I was surprised to see happy to see that the inside of this tank was super squeaky clean there was no deposits sediment or anything crazy in there so basically just had a quick wipe down sealed up the top I checked the uh, fuel sender it was working properly, so got a new fuel gauge. Now the fuel system works as it should again. So it doesn't move, wiggle around. It's nice and tight now. It's not leaking anymore. I had to take out the rear drive shaft to get the fuel tank out and the output seal was leaking so got a new rubber star seal that goes on the inside of the output shaft a new output seal um, before I put the rear drive shaft in now this thing's great again replace the input seals when these axles were out for the rear inspected the uh, spindle nuts on these as well the new fluids in the geared hubs and then here's a look at the airlift rear bumper how it mounts to the frame this has all grade 8 hardware here's the back of the pintle hitch Coming out the back, here's the airlift bumper. Has a two inch receiver adapter, hoops for your chain, and you can still utilize the pintle hitch. Here's the military 12 pin plug. This is 24 volts. I have a 24 to 12 volt converter on my civilian trailer with a four pin connector, and it works great. Here's a look at the underside. Body's nice and straight, not banged up, no holes, anything crazy. Both sides, nice and flat, not dented out, no holes. Hasn't been high centered on anything. Here's a look at the exhaust real quick. This is a 24 volt LED plate light by Midwest Military Equipment. I did not have to drill any new holes, I just used existing holes. And then it does have the military style plug, so I just unplugged the tail light. Um, and it had a Y connector basically for that, so you're all legal. Nice big mud flaps. Grade 8 bolts even for the mud flaps. Alright, it's running on BFG Baja TAs. 37 by 1250, um, 16 and a half rim size. These are original military double bead locks. It do, they do still have the run flats in them. They usually run about 30 psi in them. Does pretty well on and off road if you need, but usually when I'm off road, Squeak it down to 25 pounds of air. And if you're wondering, 
These are manufactured the 34th week of 2008. So a little bit old, but <clears throat> don't really have dry rot or anything crazy going on. And there's plenty of tread depth. So I was planning on running these until they were bald before I either get new tires or a whole new wheel and tire package all together. So the main system that is not operational is the heater. So this is the heater fan. The wiring to that and the fan motor works fine. There's a high and low. It blows great. Um, it's just missing the duct work basically from here and here that runs up to like your defroster. So most people once they start getting into that pull this dash apart and find that the the duct work is just dried up and torn up so those parts are pretty cheap um, that was kind of the next thing on my list once the weather starts getting a little colder I was probably gonna get an aftermarket system to replace this um, the heater core is still here I have no idea if it if it's good if it has holes or what the deal is but basically all it needs is this hose right here it's just looped back into itself this one there's an input and output it's just looped into itself back into the block there's supposed to be in um, two hoses that go in and out of the heater core right here and obviously there's nothing hooked up to it so I don't know if it's leaking or not. I was probably just going to eliminate that with an aftermarket one um, once it got a little bit colder. So here's your massive air filter. I had this out, blew it out when I had the uh, coolant tank out. So there are um, some tiny little spider cracks on the bottom of this. It had just a super small leak. Um, Plastic welded the bottom of that and epoxied it and it worked okay I still planned on replacing that this bottles like 120 bucks 130 bucks or something like that and I was kind of I was getting gonna get to that once I got to the heater because I, I actually do have brand new top and lower radiator hoses in a box still brand new that I was gonna swap out when I drain the coolant get a new bottle get some radiator hose or uh, heater core hoses and do all that at the same time so I can run this thing for about a month daily driving it to and from work a couple times a week I took it to Woodland Park Terry all for some soft roading <laughs> and uh, this will lose maybe a half inch of coolant in this bottle over that length of time so not super worried about it and the temperature never goes above 200 the fan always kicks on um, and brings that temp down and I just keep an eye on it but it's not an issue so here's my box of tie rod ends like I was explaining before it's brand new ready to go in I was kind of waiting to see if I was going to get new wheels or tires to do all that and alignment and all that at the same time. But these were for from uh, Midwest Military Equipment. They have a lot of good stuff, pretty much anything you need. Not always the cheapest, but definitely have everything you would ever need. Is uh, the top and bottom radiator hoses. I <laughs> still haven't even opened it. It's kind of waiting for the weather to cool down to get into that project but those are the radiator hoses so this actually came with a fixed extended bumper um, but it didn't fit in the garage that well couldn't walk in front of it barely had room behind it for the garage to shut and in the Humvee world the extended front bumpers are kind of rare so it sat about a foot out so that the hood could open without you having to drop the grill or the brush guard. Um, that was 
kind of cool, but it looked kind of weird to me. I've always liked the flip down look myself. So I basically just took off the extensions and kind of modified this to make my own drop down. So this is the original hardware on the bottom that it came with. And then uh, I just got some pins and cut them off to length. So it can now drop down. It sits a little bit closer to the hood. Looks cleaner to me. I like this look a little bit better. And I can get in front of it in the garage. And I do still have those extension blocks. They're super sturdy. Uh, if you want to put that back on instead. I didn't have to cut anything, modify anything to do that. So it can kind of work either way. The next two big projects that were on my list were obviously one, the heater. I'm in Colorado, so anticipating those cold mornings. And then probably a bed liner paint job. So overall, the body and hood are in great condition. It does look like somebody did some fiberglass repairs before, but it's pretty flat. I, I probably wouldn't repair anything uh, if I was going to paint this. I'd probably just do quick sand and straight to the bed liner paint job body's all aluminum straight body in good condition original Kark paint still but these little marks basically just the top layer of the Kark that were scrubbed off from something this is a a lot of people refer to these as tailgate diaper but it's for my mountain bike so down tube sits right here back tie right there and I just use these tie downs to strap it down and kind of bungee my front wheel to the pintle that's how I ride my mountain bike around So I did replace the steering wheel. Um, the horn did work. It was pretty pathetic uh, with the old one. It just has one contact in here. Um, when I put it back in, it doesn't work. I haven't really looked into it because I've been planning on putting an air compressor in here and a train horn next. So um, that might just need a little bit of adjustment. I don't know if the contact is not touching, but the horn did work before. I just haven't looked into that one. So, found this cool shift shifter off uh, AZ Armory, and he made this cool adapter so that the fuse actually still works as the button. <laughs> so it'll lock in place. Um, press it down to shift gears, transfer case, low gears and the brake actuated lockers they work great i just went up to Willem park the other day and had to use the lockers and tested out the low gears and everything and it was amazing there's nothing can stop this thing so if you're wondering why in the world would i be selling this well i'm asking myself the same thing but basically just trying to pay off some stupid debt um, to get back down to zero and start fresh not sure what the next project's going to be but just trying to be responsible for my family but thanks for looking write me text me call me if you have any questions i'd be more than willing to meet you in town to show you and let you drive it